When it comes to assist games, you have to know that it's so hard to make a balanced assist game. It's meant to be broken. It's meant to be cheap. It's just meant to be unfair. What is up, everybody? This is Justin Wong. And um, this video is going to be an interesting one because we don't really do too much uh, discussion videos, but sometimes I feel like we have to talk about it. And lately, it has been so crazy on social media. Are modern fighting games bad? If you guys want to see my take about it, we go through some examples. Hit the like, share, subscribe, turn on the bell's notification. And yeah, let's let's check out some of the, the current drama and everything like that. So obviously, Street Fighter 6, I think the honeymoon phase is actually completely over. And more people are kind of saying, oh, this game is not very good. It's not great. It's still my favorite fighting game of all time. You know, there's literally like kind of like a civil war going on with the people that do like Street Fighter 6 versus the people that do not like Street Fighter 6. So this one was treated by Capcom Fighters. It's uh, it's actually a tournament match from, from CPT 2023 France Offline. This says, says edge of your seat stuff, a game winning drop. So obviously we saw Daigo the Beast uh, make this amazing comeback. So by the way, this match in general, Veggie was dominating Daigo throughout the whole entire set, um, playing Zangief, low tier Zangief in an amazing fashion. But then obviously Daigo got the momentum and everything, and he kind of got into the person's head. So now a lot of people, obviously, since you've probably seen it, people are complaining about drive impact. They're complaining about drive rush. They're complaining that drive reversals are so weak. Uh, drive parry is too random. Now throw loops are just insane. Ken is broken. Luke is broken. Ban JP. It's a lot of Street Fighter 6 complaints from, from players. Right? Obviously from people that like to play this game competitively or play this game competitively because there's a one, there's a $2 million prize pool on the line. Now, I didn't see anything wrong with this clip personally. Obviously, when you look at it from a casual perspective, yo, Zangief got thrown like a million times. Like, what are you supposed to do out of it? There are actually many options on how to stop throws, but it's obviously very hard. It's, it's, it's harder said than done. It's so cheap. It's so broken. Well, thing is, yes, like I do think throw loops are very cheap, uh, but throw loops have actually been in fighting games since the beginning of time. There's just throw loops in just all the Street Fighter games. Even Guilty Gear Strive right now also has throw loops. So I don't think it's a problem with Street Fighter 6. It's just that's just how fighting games naturally are. Do I think that's a modern fighting game problem? I don't think so. Obviously, what I do think modern fighting game problems are is probably just kind of like the little bugs right the bugs in the game so i know there are people are complaining about super six where it's like oh the inputs they get eaten up by the drive rush and everything see i feel like that's something that can we can complain about and talk about and address capcom about to try to get them to fix if we nerf like specific things specific tools then it's going to be a much slower paced game right and i feel like right now a lot of people are into it because it's exciting it's explosive people feel like they can do damage against better players than them and capcom has always been like that capcom has always wanted to make every time a new different version of a fighting game they want it always different right obviously maybe the, the the game plan of throwing hadouken and they jump dragon punch has always been the same but the mechanics really change that right obviously in third strike you can't really do hadouken and dragon punch because they can just parry and air parry the game plan is always different right and i think in terms of the balancing of characters yeah i guess you could you could tone down some characters like ken jp luke they just do maybe too much damage or have more tools but there are throw loops take out throw loops in the game blah 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 even though they took out throw loops in street fighter 5 like they technically did um they were kind of still in the game and as a as a like kind of like a head or tails because throw loops you can always interrupt right throw loops were gone they're from season one to season two they were pretty much gone it's also another complaint that people were like oh do we have to really wait for one year for a patch and i just don't understand this aspect because it's always been like this since since three fighter four since even if you think about past fighting games like every year like let's say capcom versus snk one the game they didn't even have one year literally the following like 10 months later cbs2 came out and that was and that was like the patch but when it comes to Street Fighter 6, I personally think that it's still in a good place. It's still a really fun game. If you're a player that's not competing for the $1 million prize pool for first place, then I can, yeah, I can, I can see that you're going to still like this game, play this game. But if you are, but you're probably going to have some words on, on social media about like, yo, like this is stupid. This is that blah, 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 blah. And I get that as a competitor, I think like 
Oh, this is life-changing money? I get it. But still, it's just like, do we really want to just air out all, like, just talk about just things that could be solved? It's just, it's also a new game. The game came out in June. We're in November. So that's only four months. So maybe you're just not used to kind of like doing these hyperactive solutions because it's really fast paced compared to like older games, right? Another one is still Street Fighter 6 related. It's actually about the CPT system, the Capcom Pro Tour. Logan, amazing dude, commentator, everything. Bring back the CPT leaderboard. Keep the amazing World Warrior system as a way for people to qualify who can't travel. No more online premieres, no more offline winners, only premieres. This was literally a hit or miss. Um, I actually agree with Logan. Um, I love um, the fact that CPT right now has like this like world warrior system where people that are the unfortunate like third world countries, they can compete, they can have a chance to try to change their life, right? But uh, for me personally, I come from a time where offline events are the best they're so thrilling so exciting so seeing all these world warriors and online tournaments i feel like a world warrior or an online premiere happens like once a day every day or something it's just so common so frequent that it's not exciting anymore offline premieres like that ones that we see like in singapore france evo they have been so amazing because that's the thing i miss i miss seeing like Daigo go up against Punk or Men RD versus Tokido. Like, I miss stuff like that. World Warriors, you don't get that. It's just your region and everything. And like I said, we keep the regions for sure. We keep the World Warriors so people have diversity with region and everything like that. You actually always have one representative minimum guaranteed. I think the online premieres for me personally, I'm just not a really big fan of. Like, I just think the fact that like we should kind of open it in general like have either more offline premieres so people can just travel and everything because man just seeing like men rd he got second at evo fourth at singapore and second at, at the CP, uh, cpt france like he didn't qualify yet imagine men rd doesn't qualify for capcom cup while having these amazing placings but then the person that wins an off online premiere just sit at home and his uh his boxers and just plays and just wins, right? Obviously you still deserve it, but it's just like, I would personally would rather see Menardi up there because of the amount of dedication effort that he has shown to try to just like win, like win these premieres, right? Trying to win these really, really big tournaments. I feel like they're like, he deserves a spot at this point for sure. The current system doesn't allow it. Uh, so now his only chances are winning the online premiere in the east coast or the world warrior which he still has a great chance of but man does he really have to go through all that compared to just if, if you just win a world warrior regional finals and everything like that and then call the day so like for me personally i entered the regional uh world warrior canada west and i won the first world warrior second time i dq'd myself because guess what this let me tell you about the schedule the schedule is tuesday you play your pools wednesday you play top eight at 7 p.m pst it's just so it doesn't work for me as a family man, as a person who travels for work a lot. I had to DQ myself and then I couldn't enter the, the next three because of just like family, family, does family stuff and just like even traveling for work, like I said. And guess what? Um, I got seventh and I and I'm just like, oh, I'm just so uh, like I'm in that World Warrior regional finals, but I'm just so like, eh, whatever, bro. Like to me at that point, I just lost the passion because it's just it's just so uh, it's such a nuisance but i do think we do need a new system like a combination of systems where it's like for the pandemic we had this offline system versus the current system with online with the world war system i think we need both combined but it's just like right now we're just penalizing the best players for example if you want to keep the online premieres keep it right my friend uh, amakashi he actually got an amazing idea uh, i don't know how feasible it is but it's the player's choice if the online premieres, you could keep it in the region, everything like that. But players who want to qualify from different regions can participate in the online premieres by flying to that region, stay at an Airbnb or something, or a place with like stable internet and play in the online premiere there. Think about it. I think that's more hype because then at that now, that whole region has a chance to play these top players because ultimately in the end, the online premiere, you're still only gonna get one winner. So that one winner gets the opportunity to go and everything like that, right? But if you wanted to help the community grow as a whole, you get you let you allow these players come in. And now all these players are grinding ranked matches, trying to download 
the opponents from that specific region while the players in that specific region are also trying to download and learn new skills from the the away team the away players uh maybe you guys might have better ideas or capcom has a, another idea for like 20 2024 so we'll see right i think that'll be really cool so now mortal kombat 1 mortal kombat 1 has been a hot topic because if a lot of people know about nrs games nrs games have always have really fast patches i'm not really a big fan of that because it's a lot of nerfs like it's a lot of major nerfs and major buffs the talk of the town uh before we go into this clip is like baraka cyrax baraka cyrax anything cyrax we had to nerf cyrax we had to nerf the cameo not even the character so now people have to use find a new cameo to abuse and everything but when it comes to assist games you have to know that it's so hard to make a balanced assist game it's meant to be broken it's meant to be cheap it's just meant to be unfair after obviously the patch uh, people are so they had a parade parade of nerfing cyrax but now we're gonna watch this clip and this is a sindel jacks okay what is the right word appreciate here it. Fabs? appreciate, appreciate it. it yeah i just wanted to test you Fabs. it happened <laughs> i'm always ready you know wait the jacks yo that was a reset jack jack camera's on another reset jack what is going on he's gonna kill him off of three resets no, no, wait, no wait, no wait, no wait. Reset no wait. into reset I mean, into more resets. Okay, obviously, that was pretty much a touch of death combo. Uh, well, no, a touch of death, like pretty much scenario where it's like a checkmate scenario. So, uh, Rips Arena, um, he he tweeted, I like to get some community feedback. Today, I was put in a situation where I had to decide if this is allowed or if we ban this during our 5k grand finals. Since this doesn't seem intended, I made a decision to ban this midstream and the community was 50 50 about it. The problem with the hard part is like, I don't see why this was banned. Like, and this is, he said it's like during grand finals. So I'm assuming this is during grand finals. So this player, how did he made it so far without people say like the players that he fought before? Like, a like, bro, he did this thing and I got smoked and I think it's unfair. Can we do something early? So when I tweet about it, I said, I get that Jackson blockable is pretty broken, but I could have swore this was something people were already exploring way before this tournament. So I think the ruling should have been made a while ago and not in the middle of the tournament. And then Rips Arena said the player doing it reached out to me four weeks ago, a month ago, because even he thinks it's a bug. Back then I told him that it's not allowed in my events and today he just did it anyway. If that was the case, you should just be like, you should, you're just automatically DQ'd because I think the way it was worded, like a lot of people were just so upset at him. And if, if he was told that, then I, from this post, like now for that new information, it's more of just like, he didn't want to DQ him because like, he just was like, bro, like that was good. Shit. You found some godlike like, but he had to, he had to do it because he told him four weeks ago. So I think the ban, um, in terms, because it's your tournament, you can do whatever bans you want. That's normal. But I think this should have just already been banned beforehand um, or just banned the player if if another player has did it it should have been something like that now tekken 8 i think tekken 8 looks great it was really fun but that's from a person that doesn't really play tekken but for people are are like mainly tekken players i know that before tekken 7 players or people like players that play tekken hardcore they were really worried about Tekken 8 in terms of just kind of like the the movement the movement Korean backdash was kind of nerfed um, to kind of just like really stop like kind of that runaway and I get it I get it but still that movement was not easy to to do so I, I was really sad they took that away but I guess they're trying to nerf legacy skill as much as they can but the, I think the main issue right now is that the online I heard the online is actually not the best it's obviously nothing nowhere near like guilty or strive or super Fighter 6 or king of hearts 15 so it's actually pretty concerning the fact that the game is coming out in what january and online might be a flop and that's probably gonna hurt the tekken the tekken 8 player base scene um i know people are worried about the heat system it just like maybe does too much damage um it's just too much like advantage and everything there's a lot of it seems like it's a very abusive system um and it's very like it kind of reminds me of like street fighter 6 in terms of just like v trigger uh well street fighter 5 like v trigger i guess we'll see we don't have too much tons of data when you look at tekken 7 it just seems like such a perfect Tekken game. It, it feels so amazing to watch competitively, to play. It feels good. And then I think it, it seems like Tekken 8, a lot of players don't feel that same love. 
but it's also it could be it's a new game a lot of times when people come from a, from the pr previous game they're always going to nitpick on the new game because there's like the, the old stuff that they know, used to do when it comes to like for them to get them the wins it's gone right it's gone so because of that it kind of changes things so we'll see we'll see after the first month of tekken 8 to see if things change but who knows right now for strive so i saw this uh from koryuken before we only get zerd and plus our players when people got tired of smash mk and sf now we're in an era where people actually play guilty gear i'm curious what the strive what the strive to zerd pipeline is like so this guy's uh quote retreating because this guy is seeing he knows a trend of people moving up moving over to the older games like Xrd and plus r which is pretty interesting i'm not sure what happened here um i know there was like this whole hacker man thing that people talked about and like how like anytime you played online or you streamed it your game just didn't work like it was just super slow down it kind of sucks it really did hurt the, the, the numbers for guilty gear strive in terms of that uh, personally i do hope they get to bounce back uh from it but is it like too late, right? It's kind of, it might be the same situation with another modern fighting game, King of Fighters 15. King of Fighters 15, I think one of the best fighting games of, of recent times, easy. It just feels so good, plays so good, but guess what? I, I, I think King of Fighters matchmaking works now, but I don't know. Um, I haven't played in a long time. I actually want to try to get back into it and just press some buttons and see, see if I would get back into it because it kind of drew me, it kind of just turned me off that I fought only like the same one guy for like 20 matches in ranked match so it kind of sucked i don't want modern fighting games to be a consider a discord game i just want to just boot up not have to talk to anybody play rank match call a day and have fun right but yeah pretty much the whole concept of this is just there's just too many you know, like patches everyone just wants patches on social media it just sucks nrs games they get patches what every three months three five six people are just begging demanding for patches of nerfing JP, Ken, Luke, whoever, so their character can go up up a tier. It's just it's just annoying and it's just a lot. It's just a lot, a lot, a lot lately. And I really hate that. But I don't know, I guess it is what it is. It is today's modern games, modern people, modern players, modern solutions. So I think ultimately the end, yeah, I think at least for the NRS with Jax thing, I mean, y'all already knew that something like this would have, would have happened regardless. You should let it rock. Personally, if if Neve can run Firebrand and make top 80 Evo and nobody said anything about Firebrand, uh, Super Scroll, and pretty much a 300% set play, then why, why are we banning Jax on Bloggable when you have a burst in the game? So yeah, there's that. And I think for in Final Thoughts for Super 6, please uh, make CPT great again. I think CPT right now it's just so boring to watch and i'm only gonna watch if it's offline if it's online i i probably don't want to watch it as much but the patches and everything i mean trust me i hate ken i hate jp i hate luke but that doesn't mean i lose to them all the time i'll find solutions with them if i can literally say oh i found a way to fight jp with aki when people say aki is like literally like bottom two in the game you could probably find a way to find find a way to beat those characters uh, with your characters as well you just probably have to try harder and when it comes to a fighting game there's no such thing as a balanced fighting game so you guys gotta hold that or get good thank you guys for watching today's video i hope you guys really all enjoyed it we work really hard and we're just striving to push the best fighting game content that we can possibly put out so if you guys did enjoy it make sure you guys hit the like share subscribe turn on the bell notification and thank you once again for supporting and make sure you guys stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you in the next video Peace.